holding your breath for two minutes seems like an impossible feat to you, whatever you try, you just can't do it. You feel like your head is going to explode, you're afraid you're gonna pass out. But most of all, you believe you can do it. How is it that some people can hold their breath for several minutes with seemingly no effort while you struggle to even hold your breath for two minutes? Well, the answer is, it's all in here, between the ears. All you need is someone who makes you believe that you can actually do it. And that person is obviously me. In this video, I'm gonna break down a two minute breath hold in five easy steps so that you in no time can hold your breath for two minutes or even longer. Coming up. What's up guys? Two minutes, you're gonna hold your breath or even longer. It is possible and I'm gonna show you how. If you're new to this channel, my name is Gert Leroy, helping you master freediving. And honestly, when I started freediving, my life just simply changed for the better. Freediving gave me a space, a way to relax my mind and let go of all my tension. I have found my peace. And now I want you to find your peace through the practicing of freediving. So if you like the idea, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Step number one, get into a relaxed position. Now we're gonna do this laying down. So if you have a yoga mat, by all means use it. You can lay down on the couch, on your bed. We want to lay down and feel as comfortable as possible. Relax your legs, relax your feet, relax your arms, relax your hands, and make sure the palms of your hands face upwards. It's like you're receiving the energy from the universe into the palms of your hands. Now, why is it so important that we relax? Well, when we hold any kind of tension in our body, when we have muscles that are tensed up just a little bit, we are using energy, we are using oxygen. And that is oxygen that we cannot use for our breath holds. When we hold our breath, we want to be as economic as possible with the available oxygen we have in our system. We also want to relax our minds. When there are too many thoughts in our brain running around, then your brain is also using oxygen. It is believed that an active brain consumes up to 20 to even 40% of the available oxygen in your body. So we don't want that. Okay, can I start now? When you are all relaxed and you feel ready, you can proceed to step number two. Start doing the yogic breath or two-part breath. Now, what is the yogic breath? Well, I mentioned it, two-part breath. So we're going to use two parts, which is the belly and the chest to make the inhalation. So before we are going to do this, we're gonna have to practice belly breathing first and chest breathing. So when we belly breathe, we're going to visualize we're putting air into the belly. Physically, that's not possible, of course, because air only goes into the lungs, but it's just a trick to make you do, to make you uh, execute the belly breathing. So on the inhalation, the belly goes out. On the exhalation, the belly comes naturally back in. In, and your belly grows. Out, and your belly comes back to natural position. Now we're going to learn chest breathing, which is exactly the opposite. With the inhalation, the chest comes open, little forwards and exhale chest comes back to normal position make a big chest in the inhalation and back to normal position okay so now we know what is belly breathing and chest breathing we now are going to combine those two which is the yogic breath so when we're going to inhale we're going to put air into the belly first then go towards the chest and then exhale the inhalation is on a count of three seconds, the exhalation on a count of six seconds. When we exhale, we don't think about the chest, we don't think about the belly, we just make sure that the whole exhalation goes over a count of six. All of this through the nose. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're having trouble exhaling over the count of six, if you think it's too long, then you can do something that in yoga we call the ujjayi breath. Now the ujjayi breath comes down to closing your vocal cords a little bit so you can control the flux of air coming out. And when you would exhale through your mouth, it would make the typical Darth Vader sounds. 
Now we're going to exhale through the nose, so the sound is not going to be as pronounced as what you just heard. But it's still gonna be there, and if you hear the sound, it's a good thing. It will make you conscious about how you are closing your vocal cords and how you are controlling the flux of air coming through your throat. All right, gotcha. So now you know how to do this two-part breath or yogic breath, so do this for about three minutes. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly three minutes, I mean, it can be two minutes, it can even be five minutes, I mean, the whole idea of this is just to get you focused. This is not just a physical uh, special formula or trick to make you hold your breath longer, that's not what it is. It's just a preparation for your final breath, your big breath you're gonna take right before you hold your breath. And it's also a way to get you into the zone. I want you to focus on this inhalation, first the belly, then the chest, and the six seconds exhalation. I want you to fully focus on this so you have no time and no energy to think about anything else. This is all about getting to the zone. This is all about focusing just on breathing in and breathing out. Now I know this can be quite challenging for most of you. You are not used to doing this. It's probably the first time you're doing this. So if during this three minute breathing, you would feel that some thoughts are coming into your head again, maybe negative thoughts or unpleasant thoughts, then that is okay, you know? I mean, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be disappointed that this happens. Just let it happen and gently let them fade away again by focusing again on your breathing. Don't try to fight them. If you fight them, they might get even worse. So don't fight nature, don't fight what is happening. And when you're done with your three minutes breathing, you can proceed to step number three, take your final big breath. So before we're going to hold our breath, we're going to fill our lungs to the maximum with air, as much air as we can take in. So how are we going to do the final breath? Well, first of all, we're going to do this through the mouth. So before we did everything through the nose, the final breath is just easier if we take this big breath through the mouth. Through the nose would be a little bit too difficult because flux of air coming through the nose is more restricted. We simply can take in more air through the mouth. So first belly, then chest over a count of five seconds. And it looks like this. So now we're holding our breath. It might be that you feel a little bit of pressure in your chest and that is totally normal because you just took in a lot of air. So don't be distracted by this. Just go with it and know that after a couple of seconds, it might disappear. You will get used to it and it's perfectly normal. It's not a bad thing. It won't hurt you. Just accept it and relax even more. Now, I'm telling you to relax, but that doesn't mean that you're going to relax. So I have to give you a little trick to make you relax, okay? To make you feel relaxed. So here comes the body scan into play. So what is the body scan? You're going to go over the different parts of your body. You're gonna start with your hands and fingers. And the goal of this whole body scan is to release all tension. Now, subconsciously, we are tense. We are holding tension in our muscles without even knowing it. So to make sure that this tension that we are not aware of is out of our body, we are going to squeeze our hands a little bit and then release again. So if there was any tension, then now you are sure you released it. So you start with your right hand, then you go over your upper arm, you visualize that you're releasing the tension in your upper arm, then you're going towards your shoulder, you visualize, okay, there might be some tension in here, so I'm gonna uh, release this tension. You might even move your shoulders just a little bit, just to shake off the tension. Then you're going towards the other side of your body, you're doing the same. Then you're going towards your chest, you visualize all the tension getting out of your chest, you're going towards your stomach. Maybe you might be holding some tension in your stomach without knowing, so make sure you relax the stomach. And then you're going towards the upper legs, the knees, uh, lower legs, your ankles, your feet, your toes. And while you are doing this, you're totally focusing on those different body parts and you don't have time to think about anything else. But at some part, you're gonna start feeling a little less comfortable. And that takes us to step number four. You're gonna start feeling the urge to breathe. So what's gonna happen? Your brain is going to tell you, okay, so you're doing well, but now I think this is long enough. You should better breathe now. 
Be mindful that this is your brain telling you this and that your body is capable of holding your breath way longer. So this is just a mental thing. Now, the question is, why is it that at that moment your brain is telling you, I need to breathe? I don't know. So this all has to do with higher levels of CO2, carbon dioxide. You might think when you start feeling this urge to breathe, that this is because of, well, you're running out of oxygen, right? Because you've been holding your breath. No, that is not true. You still have enough oxygen. You can hold your breath way longer. This is not an issue that has to do with oxygen. This is all about CO2, carbon dioxide. The longer we hold our breath, the more our levels of CO2 increase in our body. And it is exactly those higher levels of CO2 that give a signal to our brain and our body telling us, okay, now I have to breathe. So if you know that you still have enough oxygen, but it's another gas, the CO2, that is giving you this signal, then it is much more easier to believe in yourself, to trust in yourself, and hold your breath a little longer. So from now on, instead of freaking out, instead of getting anxious and thinking, oh my god, I gotta breathe now, we're going to do exactly the opposite. We're going to relax even more. Now I know that is a challenge and if this was easy then I wouldn't be making videos for you guys but you have to find a way to relax even more when this urge to breathe starts manifesting itself. It is very possible that during this phase you will feel uh, physical uh, spasms around the stomach area or even in the neck and in free diving we call these contractions. So you have to know that these contractions are actually a good thing. They help you distribute the available oxygen in your body better throughout your whole body to your brain, to your heart, your lungs, your vital organs. Go with the flow, let the contractions happen. If you tense up, it will only get worse. So instead of tensing up, instead of freaking out, you have to do exactly the opposite. You have to be mindful about this. Detect every single sign of panic or stress or fear and do exactly the opposite. If you feel, oh, I'm getting a little in panic here, switch your mindset, relax even more. And eventually you're gonna release and breathe again. I was afraid to black out. I know that this is one of the things that you are um, scared about, like, okay, but what if I'm gonna hold my breath and then I'm gonna pass out? So this is not gonna happen. This only happens in extreme breath holds or extreme free diving. But yeah, it can happen. And if it happens, then know that this is uh, perfectly okay. This is no problem at all. You will simply just wake up. This is also the reason why we do this laying down on a yoga mat and not uh, sitting on a chair, because if, in a worst case scenario, you would lose consciousness sitting on a chair, then you might just fall on the ground and even hurt yourself. So that's why we lay down on the floor. If you would black out, then you would just go to sleep and a couple of seconds later, you will just wake up again. Once again, you will not black out and I'm not saying this to give you a false sense of security. I'm saying this because it's simply the truth. Blackouts only happen in extreme situations and a two minute breath hold is not an extreme situation. So when you decided to stop the breath hold, you release, start breathing again. That takes us to step number five, the recovery breath. So you've just held your breath for two minutes, so you are a bit on lower oxygen levels. So the thing is, now you want to replenish your body as fast as possible with the necessary oxygen. It looks a bit like if you just finished running around the block and you're a little bit tired, that's how you breathe, right? <sighs> you're a little bit tired and now you're like uh, gasping for air. That's exactly the recovery breath. Five cycles to restore your oxygen levels. So it's important we always do this recovery breath after uh, we abort the breath hold. If you would forget to do this, in extreme situations, it would still be possible that you pass out after you stop the breath hold. So make sure you be mindful about this. Always do recovery breath after each single breath hold. Question of the day, how long can you hold your breath? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna know more about mastering freediving, then hit the round subscribe button here and here I have a full guide on a three minute breath hold. So if two minutes is too easy for you, then go ahead and click on this one. See you next time guys. Peace.